2,000 years ago, this hill was one of the richest and most important centers of the Roman Empire. A town built around a weapons arsenal on the Danube River in northwest Bulgaria. It was one of the biggest towns uh, along the Danubian, uh, the, the Limes, I mean the boundary of the Roman Empire in the Roman period. Today, Razziaria could have been a tourist attraction to rival those in Italy and Greece, but there's not a tourist in sight. Instead, with the authorities standing by, illegal treasure hunters backed by powerful mafias have turned Razziaria into a wasteland. The treasure hunters don't care about the history that they're destroying when they plunder these areas. We've only been here a little while, and in that time, we've found part of a tombstone and some human bones, including part of a skull and some teeth. The Romans sent their dead to the afterlife prepared, carrying coins in their mouths. So whoever found these teeth found coins and probably much more. I think that Razziaria is one of the best examples of the horrible situation with archaeological heritage in Bulgaria and the weakness of the government and the system for preservation of the archaeological heritage. Can you imagine one of the very, very big towns from the Roman period has been destroyed in the last 20 years by machines? We will never know the history of one of the biggest times uh, in Thrace from the, from the Roman period. At one time, 17 bulldozers were counted here, ripping through the earth. The black market trade in antiquities is the only line of work at the bottom of the hill in the neighboring village of Archar. I was offered a range of items as soon as I arrived. From pieces of pottery to coins, jewelry and stone and bronze figurines. This local man freely admits to being one of up to 600 people in this village who dig for a living. So many. A joint Bulgarian-Italian archaeological expedition in the 1980s excavated a small part of Razziaria and uncovered these amazing artifacts, now displayed at a nearby museum. But since the fall of communism, most of the riches have disappeared into private collections in Europe and beyond. Treasures worth hundreds of millions of dollars that Bulgaria has lost forever. Ventislav Gurgov has been an archaeologist for 30 years. He's a specialist in the Neolithic period or late Stone Age, and his best known discoveries are some 7,000 year old ceramics and one of the earliest gold artifacts in the world. To get a sense of the scale of the illegal treasure hunt, Gurgov takes me on a tour. You don't have to go far to find incredibly significant historical sites, like this windswept field just off the main road behind a petrol station. But it's the same old story. There are signs of fresh digging all over the place. Това е пак от този съд, друга паничка, пак тя керамична. Ето това по-голем съд, това е дръжково танфора. Още е много керамика. Тъжно ме, ако виждам това нещо, но то не е за първи път и 
ние се натържаваме и неприятно, че си тръгвам от този път. The petrol station attendant has more bad news. Е, там пак също купат, е. Къде е? В лози бе там. Не. Като една камиона. Е, тук, тази гора, къде е това? Ами, Брудудер е един сълкачи, нали? Next on Gurgov's depressing tour is a 5th century fortress. First excavated in the 1930s, Gurgov worked here on another section in the 70s. Вижте, когато вари тук, тук е това креп, това е кул, крепост на колето, е. Се вижда, когато в голяма част се разрушава от нашите приятели маняк. Even the parts that had previously been excavated have now been upturned. Те са, може да се кажа, че са почти катастрофални, тъй като голяма част от това, което е било проучено, което е запазено и било се пак в някакъв вид запазен, консервиран, те си всичко се разрушили в стремеството с влизайки под основите на стените, подкопавайки ги, те стените след време от пътя на гравитация се разрушават тези стени и се събавят. A young man appears and tells us he often sees men digging here, including some very recently. Четири има човека са били. Носиха са кирки в едно като един чувал така носят са. И четири има човека и там купеят са. Чувам, че ще чука там, таковато и купеят са. Живеят от нещо и от нещо, но не е това пътя да се разрушиш богатството националното, което е такова. Всъщност ние си убиваме кокошка, когато сме носи златни яйца. Това има нещо реално погледнато. Even so, Gurgov says he doesn't blame the hunters as much as he does the authorities. И не са виновни те, виновни са законите, виновни са пак и ситуацията, но държавата не се изпълнява законите. Законотворците и тие, които съдат, съда и полицията не се върши работа. Below the fort is a picture-perfect valley where people and this river have been meandering for thousands of years. At the end of the path, directly below the fortress, is a monastery. Gurgov is disappointed to see that since his last visit, there are signs of fresh digging here too. Това е характерно от цяло България, защото всяко ходи в Румъния, Македония, Турция, Гърция, те са с педи надпред. Всичко са пази, съхранява се, охранява се, реконструира се и привича туристите. Баргала, кой е въобще в един град, ни си пази им с ценности, никой ги съхранява и нищо не правим. Хубава римска керамида. When I return to the Roman arsenal town Ratsiaria with Gurgov, he shows me the only part of the 20 hectare site that's partially intact. The only reason it survived is that the treasure hunters know archaeologists meticulously excavated here in the 1930s. Навсякъде трябва да бъде, което е прочно да бъде такова нещо хрено, в повече и по-малко вечна запазено. Обаче виждаме ни развалини, това е една, може би една хилина част от целият обект, който бите. Така трябва да изглежда целият обект. We follow a well-worn path, looking for evidence of recent digging, and find plenty. Скопките и неманярите не спират въобще. Нема държава, нема власт, която да ги спе. Въпреки се оплак от полицаите, както виждаш, нито полицаи видяхме, нито хора, за които могат да се глижда обект. Then we spot some treasure hunters at work. I'm going to go up this hill and see if I can get a shot of them digging, but they're not going to be happy seeing me here, so I've got to be a little bit careful and quiet. I make my way up a small hill to get a vantage point without being seen. I can make out several diggers and one man with a metal detector. Then I realize Gergov has marched in to speak to them, but when I reveal myself, things get quickly out of hand. 
One of the men lunges at Gurgov with a shovel, and another grabs rocks to throw at me. I quickly put my camera down. It was only then that we realize there are many more of them than we'd thought. They hurl abuse, then a death threat. But then luckily for us, they decide to run away. After years of inaction, some say collusion, the state says it's now getting serious. At police headquarters, I meet Velodia Velkov, in charge of combating the plunder of Bulgaria's cultural heritage. He blames the local population's apathy. But Diana Gorgova blames the legal system, and despite stricter anti-trafficking laws introduced in April, she fears nothing much will change. There are more than 200 different cases sent to the court. Nobody has been sentenced, and as you have seen, they continue to destroy. Can you give me an idea of, of how many people are arrested for treasure hunting in, a, in an average month or an average year, or even a comment about how many have been arrested since these new stricter laws? Gergov wants me to meet a colleague of his currently excavating a Neolithic Stone Age site in this valley. <laughs> Georgi Ganetsovsky found the only way to deal with the treasure hunters was to let them work alongside him. He knows this site contains no metal, so he let aggressive treasure hunters search with their metal detectors. When they found nothing, they left him alone. On the hill behind him is a Byzantine fort from the early Middle Ages, where the treasure hunters literally blast the loot out of the ground. Since the rise of capitalism, Bulgaria has been plagued by organized crime. The Mafia quickly discovered that it could raise huge profits from uh, organizing this type of crime from Ill illicitly trafficking goods and selling them to Western markets, so it became one of their favorite businesses. Lawyer Todor Chobanov prosecutes cases of theft and trafficking of antiquities. They are very willing buyers that will easily, you know, give you huge amounts of money for your artifacts and goods, and those rates of profiting are comparable to the rates of profiting you have in uh, drugs. Petar Dimitrov likes to call himself a collector. We meet in a modern sculpture park to discuss his trade. He's required by the new law to register his collection, in effect to hold it in trust for the state, but he flatly refuses. Petar 
he explains his position by accusing the police of involvement in the organized racket. Обявявайки един колекционер една колекция за 100 000 примерно евро, утре ако не дойдат полицаи, ще дойдат бандити и формирани от полицаите, ще го оберат, ще го отвлечат, ще му отрежат главата и до тук. Няма такъв луд колекционер, който по новия закон да се регистрира колекция. You could imagine that if there is a museum willing to give 1 million dollars for a single vase, for a single Greek vase, which they acquire here illegally for 10 dollars or 20 or 50 dollars from uh, you know, illiterate looters, you could imagine that if this situation exists, there will always be great temptation. After much negotiation, and when I promised to conceal their identity and their location, some treasure hunters agreed to take me to one of their favorite spots. Many treasure hunters are well informed. They study the catalogues from the auction houses and they know exactly what they're looking for. When the Romans built their fortress on the top of this cliff, it offered them protection from attackers, but it doesn't help today. They search mainly for gold and other metals. Ancient ceramics don't stand much chance against their picks and shovels. So is, is that valuable for you? Ако е цяло, примерно, нали, нещо струва, но така щупено трябва да се сбира. Maybe it was the whole thing, but it just got broken with the with the shovel. Не, 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 я работи внимателно, нали, тие, нали, за тях търсим. These men occupy the lowest rung of the treasure hunting ladder. Unemployed since the fall of communism, they say they have no other choice. Е, тогава нямаше време. Заводи имаше фабрики. От сутрин до вечер на работа, кога да ходиш по горите? Имаше много работа и не ти даваха да стоиш без работа, първото. Искаш, не искаш там. Do you have any any sympathy for these people? I mean, they're, they're, some of them are doing it quite tough. There's no work out in these villages. No, no. Uh, I think that there shouldn't be any excuse. Poverty is not an excuse, I think. The question is uh, if you use, how you use your knowledge for something which is legal, for something which is creative, for something which is positive, or for, for illegal and for the robbery of uh, your country. So. Say, for example, you find something very valuable. What do you do with that? Come on. <laughs> Come on, we know you don't give it to the museum, so what, what's, what do you really do? I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to find it and I'll think about it. I'm going to take the best of good money, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Picking over Bulgaria's past may make these men a few dollars. But the loss to the country's heritage is incalculable. <laughs>